purpose of this video is to expand on what I talked about in video 19. In that video, I went through UV unwrapping in Blender using the core tools that come with the package. I went into a fair bit of detail around marking seams and unwrapping and what the whole process is, but we didn't use too many of the quick methods that were there. We just went through all the kind of considerations you have to have around that. So in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the extra options that are available for unwrapping. And that is gonna be Smart UV pro Project, Follow Active Quads, which I did talk about in video 19, but I'll just quickly cover it again here. We'll go through all the different projection methods and we'll also talk about Project from View. Let's get into it. We're going to start with Smart UV Project. And what we have here is a simple hard surface model that I've used in previous videos. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to UV Editing tab. I turn off Transparency. And just to let you know, I have applied a color grid here on the UV, the UV page and or the UV tab as a, uh, rather. And I've also created a shader which shows it in the right hand side here as well. And as you can see, it's very distorted. Texel density is completely off. It needs sorting. So I have this model split in different places. So I'm going to start with the base. So I'm just I'm going to turn on transparency first of all. I'm going to select all of that base. Okay which is most of it. And as we can see here, yeah, this is absolutely no good for us. So what we can do is come up to UV here, we'll press the shortcut, which is U. I'm gonna click Smart UV Project. First of all, we can choose the angle limit, which changes the higher this angle, the more it has to, the more curve you have to have before it splits UV islands. The island margin is how much space there is between them. You always want to have something. Uh, the bigger this is, the less likely you will have any bleed um, when you're texturing. So always keep a bit of space. I think 0.02 should be fine. Um, area weight, I don't really bother with personally, but what that can be is um, if you wanted larger areas to take up more texture space, as in beyond true de texel density, then you could increase this. I don't change it. I keep everything as it should be and I respect the texel density that way. So let's click OK. There we go. Turn off transparency. See that much clearer. These parts are still not very good, but you can see here that the base is already looking pretty good. So it gets you off to a quick start and might even be good enough for an asset like this. Then you can continue to do the same or the others. Now let's talk about projections, the first being cube, and we're back with our media unit for this one. So once again, do the same thing, go to UV editing. Now what I need to do is apply the UV color grid to both the model and the grid. So I'll go and do that now. Okay, so I've done that now, but you can see that is a bit of a mess. So let's go into transparency, let's select everything and we can see it's all over the place really. So let's go up to UV or again, press U to bring up our menu. And let's go, to, let's try cube projection for this because it's kind of a cubic rectangular uh, box type um, object that we have. And so we've already got a much better result, which might even be usable again. I mean, obviously over here, you'd need to tidy up your UVs we need to pack those islands. No, it's over here. We can do pack islands. There we go. Almost all of those are in there. Basically just take this island here, move it where we want, maybe somewhere like that. And then we've got something which has worked for cube projection. Okay, the can is back for cylinder projection. So there's a couple of things to be aware of this. You don't always get exacting results. There's a couple of things that you're gonna to have to do to tidy things up a bit, and I'll show you what I mean. So once again, color grid on the UV grid here on the left, and I'm showing it in shader on the can here. And it's really, really bent and looking weird. So if we go into transparency and select that, yeah, we've got some projection from view there. So what I can do, first of all, you go to cylinder projection and we get something which is more or more more or less there 
I mean, again, this is only a starting point. We would have to tidy that up. But what you'll probably notice is that the base is looking very strange. So even when using these methods, okay, you still have to use seams. That's what we're going to do now. Go into edit mode and you can see that I've already marked a seam here in with that red area. So what I can do is just select a few of these and then let's grow that selection and then this is where you use other methods so here I'm going to use cube projection just on the part that I've highlighted Look at it on the left here it's got some strange boat type bird type shape I don't know so what we do now is cube projection so I get a flat projection of that and that looks much better now I'm going to move that out of the way and what we then do now we've done both of them is again go to transparency select everything and we come up to uv on the left hand side and we average the island scale so that they have the right texel density and we can do that by checking here we just turn off transparency we can see that they look fairly fairly similar you discount the stretching that's going on that's everything again come to uv We've already averaged the island scale, now we just need to pack them. And there you go. We've got something that feels like it's beginning to get there. That is not finished, of course. We've not got as good a result as the other, or the Q projection or the Smart UV projection that we used on other items, but it gives you a good starting point. As soon as you tidy up some of these edges and you straighten them out, that will start to look much better. Next, we'll deal with spherical projection. A little bit like cylindrical projection, it's a little bit fussy this. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to select, I'm just going to go on to transparency, I'm going to select everything and as you can see it's looking a little bit skew with. So first thing we can do is go to UV and choose sphere projection and well you know, this could do with being straighter, it could do with being a bit more even. Um, the first thing I want to talk, want to lead to your attention is you actually have options here for it. So you can go to sphere projection, you can choose to view on equator, which is the middle of the spherical objects of this snowman, say in this area, or this area of the head, or you can, you can also clip to bounds as well, so everything is kept within the UV space, but I won't do that because I will pack my islands later on. Now, one of the things I can do to improve this is if I just make that a bit smaller, I'm going to hide the middle body and the hat just so that we can see that a little bit clearer. So you'll notice that also I mark seams here as well, which you can't really get away from doing, and that will give us slightly better results for the body and the head. And spherical projection is only going to be good for things like this or a football or a globe, for example, um, or a planet. So it's quite limited in what you can use it for. So what I'm gonna do now, now I've marked those seams, I'm gonna select everything again, and we're going to make some adjustments here. And the adjustments that I'm going to do mainly is I'm most of this has been unwrapped okay. If we were just, you know, texturing this for, with snow, I think we'd get away with it. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select all the flat pieces which I have in places like here so that um, so that we can, we can get on with this so just give me a second I will do that now Now you can see on the left where the spherical projection has not worked very well. So while at mark seems maybe you would get away without having to do that here because what we could do again is go to you, go to, I'm going to choose cube projection because they're, they're fairly flat surfaces and we should get an okay result with this. Oh, actually, let's not forget about that face as well, which uh, is a terrible end gone, but still. Go to UV projection and then we've got something Let's just select everything there 
eventually. Okay, and I'm going to move that out of the way. Transparency is back on. We select everything. And then what I'm going to do here again is my usual. I go to UV. I go to average and scales. Do I need to select everything here? But I think I'll do it here just in case. So let's go to average island scale. So they're all the right texel density. Then we go to pack islands. And then we've got something which is probably usable. There's still a few areas here where, you know, the face doesn't look great, which is there. That's clearly quite stretched. And you'd have to spend some time straightening out, straightening out these edges. But again, if you've got a texture like snow or something on it, then it'll probably be okay. And some of these you may not need to worry about, such as this piece here, because it's going to be hidden once we start to add our objects back. Last one I'm going to do is project from view. So there's limited use cases for this, but you may just want to select certain parts of a model, maybe just do an image and just texture those parts for a single image. So I've got the staircase from the shear video here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change to author, orthographic view because that would actually make more sense to do this, uh, where you're gonna get something more accurate, is let's say we just wanna do the stairs here. Um, I could perhaps select each of these steps here. I select all the faces, I've got those. Let me go to UV editing, zoom in here, zoom out here, okay. Go into transparency, Eventually, well, oh, my word. Okay, and we go to front view. Okay, and then what I can do if I wanted, I could just go to UV, project from view, and then that literally gives us that image of the steps, and we could just texture that as we see fit. Now, of course, I say it works there. It, you know, you could do it from here, and then to Check from view there as well. Again, if you wanted some kind of, if you if you wanted to unwrap it that way for some particular reason, um, it's good if you let's say have like a picture frame or something, or you have some flat planes in the world and you just want to quickly unwrap them. It's great from that perspective. It's not the most practical, but that's how that works. Quick refresher on follow active quads, which we talked about in video 19. So I'm back with the poly build tree stump that we had and we have a retopologized version of the mesh. So I'm gonna turn off the high poly and I'm gonna to go to UV editing. I'm going to turn on transparency and select everything. And you can see what we've got there, which is not great. So first of all, let's get a UV set to work with to, to start with. So I'm just gonna go smart UV project. Okay, that's potentially useful actually if we needed to stitch things up. So. Once again, another example of where Smart UV can be very handy, but maybe I want the, the squares to all be as even as possible. So what I will do here, now I've got an unwrap to work with, is I'll come over to the UV window, make sure I'm on face. I'll select one of the most square faces that I can find. I think this one looks good. So let's choose that one. And then I come over to UV on the right hand side and I choose follow active quads and there's a few different views you can do so length average even I'm going to use length average because they're not all even they're all slightly different so it'll look better on the UV map so if I click OK wow you can see there it's absolutely straightened everything out there now that's probably better for certain types of objects I'm not sure I would necessarily use it for this one but that just shows you how it's just packed all of that together. So if I go to say, let's add a color grid here. We've got something there to work with. I select everything. And again, I do the average island scale and then I pack those islands. You can see how all that has come together. And then I can go to shading add a texture, which would be an image texture. We add our color grid up, 
and then we can see where that is there and you can see that's it's got some i mean it's got some real distortion here because we've used active quads um again you might get away with it here because it's actually it's actually an organic object i'm not sure about that seam actually i'd probably get rid of that and hide it somewhere but you can already see how it's giving you something that feels like it's following the actual organic nature of this model i mean certainly parts here like there that's just unacceptable that would need to be cleaned up but again it's only a refresher on how to use follow active quads so that's going to wrap up this video it was just to go through the different methods that i didn't cover in video 19. i hope it was useful i hope you learned something i'll see you next time